Hi guys and welcome to this mastermind session. I'm Simon Wood and today we're going to be discussing the power of bots. So joining me on today's call we have some of the guys behind Maps Rainmaker and also the founders of Conversion Bots. So joining from Maps Rainmaker is Mike Long who is responsible for some of the biggest grossing sales funnels the internet has seen over the last 20 plus years and also Eric Brief is also a king of funnels and SEO. Um, we also have my partner Imran joining us today. He's been writing highly converting sales copy online for the last 12 years and is the man behind our conversion bot sales funnel and also our conversion bot bot. So welcome, gents. It's good to see you all uh, join us today. I'm fired up. This is going to be exciting. Let's, yeah. let's dive, dive right exciting. into the box. We'll dive right in. So I'm going to share my screen and actually we can take a look at uh, an example um, SEO agency bot to, to kick the conversation off and then take things forward from there. So bear with me while I just bring that up. I'd like to see this, yeah. So I'm just going to load this from the beginning again, guys. Do you want me just to take you through the idea and concept behind this bot before we start talking? Yes, please. Okay, sure. So this, what we're looking at here is a full page bot, but typically this would sit on a website as, as a widget. It could obviously be used in many ways. And, and the idea behind this is really to generate leads um, or calls um, and inquiries for your SEO agency. So you can see we've got a short intro here. Um, we're kind of setting the scene and we're giving just a few options. You don't want to give too many options up front if you can help it. So here we've just got the option to schedule a school, which is obviously going to come through and be a, a hot lead because somebody is really interested in talking about SEO services. Or we've got an option to provide a little bit more education in case people just want to feel a bit more secure before making a decision. And the I like idea behind pushy, education... By the way. I, I, Sorry? I, I, like, I like how it's not pushy. I like how... You know, even though schedule a call is on top, um, it's a smaller box than, than the, the show me more. So it, it's kind of, kind of that feeling like you, you're proud to, to show people more. It's not like, oh, you know. Call or nothing. It. Yeah. Call or nothing. <laughs> yeah. That's actually huge. I was, I was sorry, I'm going to just interrupt you for a second, Simon. Was, no, this is when I was thinking about, my, I was excited when we were on that, uh, that webinar yesterday around what this could possibly do for my, my company. And the first thing I thought to myself was, I know for a fact that there are people that get to our website that are not ready to schedule a call. And we, have, we get nothing from those people, nothing. We don't get the email. We don't get them educated more. We don't. We don't guide them down the pathway. So I'm excited to see where this is you get going. No, you get them leaving your website. That you, you yeah. get them used to saying no to you, Eric. Yeah, and I yeah. think the other important thing sure, at this actually. point, if, if if they do want more information, it's that we don't flood them with information either. We don't ever want to have too much content in one block. This is pretty much the limit that I would go to. And even then, we want to break this up with images and gifts just to make it a little bit more easier on the eye. Um. And then we've got a, another section where we can offer people to schedule a call. If they still want more information, they've got that option. Or if based on the information they've already um, been reading through, they've got a question, then they can click to ask a question. And of course, when somebody's asking a question, we're going to grab their name, their email or phone number and what their point of interest is. So that's also generating a really good quality lead because you can then contact them back already knowing their problems or what they're struggling with or what it is that they need help with, which is obviously going to put you in a much better position when you do pick up that phone call or you do send them that email. But of course, if they still want more information, then they can do that. And one thing that's really important to note at this point is that all of this, um, let's call it educational content that we've placed in here, has all been taken from the, the website of this SEO agency. So it's not like you're having to work hard to come up with content. The educational content already on somebody's website um, can be used again in the box. Very nice. Uh, and I, I just wanted to add that, yeah, and, and I just wanted to add that what we teach our community is the concept of micro conversions. Um, you know, what when somebody's going through a bot, each click to progress through the bot is what we, you know, class as a micro conversion. And as they progress through the conversation, those micro conversions really accumulate. And that's, you know, when their mindset kind of changes from, you know, someone who's vaguely interested to somebody who's become a full out conversion because you've kind of got them engaging, interacting and clicking and just accumulating those micro conversions. Um, and, and it's kind of interesting that, you know, Simon mentioned this right now is what we call a conversational landing page, a full page bot. Now we've actually found that many local businesses, you know, their websites, their landing pages, with all due respect, often really messy. You don't know where to go when you, when you land on them, you don't know where to navigate, you know, they've, 
again, with all due respect, they've often been knocked up by, you know, part-time designer, you know, they're, they're kind of cheap looking pages, but they don't really perform the key functionality, which is kind of informing and, and kind of you know, converting into leads. So what we've actually found is that we've got clients who use this page, a conversational landing page as a direct funnel, you know, a, a, a kind of dedicated landing page where you're getting somebody into a conversation and there are no other distractions on the page. You know, everybody, everybody in the world's used to using, you know, messaging apps like WhatsApp and Facebook Messenger or whatever. Um, so when they get onto a page like this, they know exactly what to do because they're just so familiar with the process and there are no distractions. They just, you know, you take them down your funnel into the conversation. Yeah, and you just know, some, but, something to add to that, um, yeah. where um, currently this full page uh, or conversational landing page, as it, it might be, um, called. You can see that when you land on it on a, a desktop computer, it, it fits. We've got the background. But when we land on it on our mobile, we just have this middle section with the conversation on. So when we're used to looking at messaging apps, it, it's, it's, it fits perfectly. What you find with a lot of traditional landing pages, they're designed for one or the other. Or if they are designed for both, it doesn't always fit perfectly well on both. So yeah, it's something that just really works just to add on to what Imran was saying there. Let me let me tell you uh, another real strength to this, um, and and Eric, uh, I, I think can, can really chime in on this from a standpoint of you know um, somebody who's closed a few clients, right, a few hundred clients, um, like Eric has several hundred clients actually. Um, so there's We're approaching six hundred. Uh, sorry, six hundred. Yeah. So there's um, there's there's a uh, a very important tested concept in uh in dating okay uh let's just say men men and women in this case but you know i'm not discriminating of course but just this is a, a particular dynamic between men and women um where if uh like, like this is i'm talking about like people romantically meeting uh you're not they're not already boyfriend girlfriend or married but they're just you know meeting for the first time let's say um so if you have two scenarios in the first scenario like in both scenarios they're gonna have they're gonna spend an hour together okay um in the first scenario they spend the hour all in one place. Let's say they met at a bar and they talk at the bar for an hour. In the second scenario, if you if you move uh, locations uh, once or more, especially nice if you can do it a couple of times, uh, you kind of come up with an excuse and say, oh, you know, let's let let's uh, oh, you know, my friends are across the street. Let's pop up across the street, or hey, would you like a coffee or something like that um, to go to a coffee shop and then in, you know and then a quick walk in the park. But it's still the same amount of time then the result for the woman, the experience she gets is dramatically, dramatically different. And she's far, far, like many times more likely to want to continue on in the, like to not, basically not to get bored. E Eric, in the same way, you like, you get somebody like, in, you know, started in a conversation, you love to break it up a little bit and to, and to make it, you know, you, you don't try to, you know, typically you could, you could sell on the first, contact with somebody but you know you really structure a process where it's like you meet them you schedule a demo you do a value video in between they're getting messages from you so like but that whole process eric is happening here in a micro way like these guys are saying about the, these micro commitments are doing that effect of bouncing people around and making it more exciting Totally. I mean, this is kind of like what they, one of those sales things that, you know, people talk about is like this person saying, yes, yes, yes. That's like the micro commitments here. So they're further investing their time in this, uh, in this search, in this, in this, you know, online conversation here. Um, and uh, like I said, to me, the, you know, the big, huge value here is that I can capture someone's attention and help move them forward no matter where they are in the process. Like, are they wanting to buy SEO right now? Are they wanting to learn more about us and interested in buying SEO? Do they just want more leads and not quite sure exactly what we do, but they heard we're great. I ask a question. It just gives anyone an opportunity, no matter where they are in the process, to move forward in our funnel. And it makes you look it makes you look more confident as well as you know somebody who could put together a great looking bot. Can I see what happens? I've been wondering since the second I saw it. Could you click to ask a question? Because I want to see what, what happens when you do that. Sure. So when we go asking, ask, asking a question, we literally, um, you know. Reform. 
the person the person can excuse my typo there the person can type whatever their question is another one um and then it's just going to go through and pick up their their name and then their email address and and obviously i mean one thing that actually in this case is picking up a phone number and an email address so let me just put a random this number in i love it and actually what what's important and it's the same and i was going to mention this with booking as well obviously it's important what we do with the um, data that we collect. And obviously many different people are gonna to wanna to manage that in many different ways. So, I mean, it's interesting that you said, um, show me what happens when we come through to ask a question. So this data that we collect, um, custom text for, for, a, for the question and the email address and phone number, you can collect that and have the bot send it wherever you want it to. So if you wanna send that to a, a Google sheet, you can go there for you to manage. If you've got Salesforce or HubSpot or something that you, you use, then you can send it there and it will appear there for your sales team to pick up and, and look right. at what people are wanting. Um, so it's important that we, we do highlight that because there's many different ways that you can actually use the data. And it's the same with the um, scheduler call. And now, in this case, I've already it integrated with Smart Engage, aren't you? Um, yes. Smart Engage, yes, we are, yes. Um, wow, and in this case, that's, no, that's no small thing. I mean, a lot of people in our community use Smart Engage. So this is already set up for that i mean that's freaking nice guys yeah but only yeah, take a um, few minutes to do that sorry, yeah we've got yeah sorry no i was going to say we've got you know a wide range of inspirations and and literally with smart engage is just literally one click of a button everything's integrated and you can segment um all of your lists as well so you know you can really assign different bots to to different lists but like when we're using bots or when we're selling bots as a service like what we really say to people is like, how do you normally capture this data that we're presenting in this chat? How do you normally capture that on your site? And pretty much everyone will say they use a form, right? Um, but what we really say to people is, how much do you actually enjoy filling out a form? Like, right. is there anyone here who actually enjoys filling out a form? You know, maybe if you're like really, really excited and you know you can't wait to to build something out. But look, come on, it's the most boring, tedious process there is. And the more fields that you add to a form, you know, the more boring it gets. And and most likely, okay, you're qualifying the yeah, lead by adding more fields. Eric, maybe discovery forms should just be replaced with this. I mean, doesn't this make uh, way that's right? That's what I thought, man. Can I tell you, I'm always I mean, afraid of forms like that um, that I enter my information in and then I click on the wrong thing and something happens and I lose the info. <laughs> I know it sounds like I'm <laughs> always concerned about yes. that because I, I put a lot of care into this. Right. I, and, and also, guys, this is actually, we've already hit something that was so worth us doing this right here. All of our people use discovery forms. All of them. I mean, not all, but I mean, almost everybody, almost every website you know, that, that we teach people to make with their agency site is gonna have a discovery form. And right. yeah. it is so clearly better than that. I mean, there's just absolutely no question. That well, well, one, thing, one thing we haven't got an example of here is that you can embed these forms into your site. So where you've currently got a form in your yeah. site, you can just have the iframe of the, the bot oh, in so there. Oh, iframe as well. It doesn't have to be yeah. a widget in the bottom no. right in that box. You can just replace yeah. your form, literally swap them out. I love this. So it would just be it just be in that little area, and obviously it'll just scroll down. Um, you yeah, need to yeah. think about how much content you put that's visible on on when it when it loads. But apart from that, yeah, you can do that no problem at all, and that's going to be a lot more effective than a form because I think also the more fields you have in a form, the less conversions you get. Right. I'm I'm so excited about this. Uh, this, this, is, this is wonderful. Can, can we see the the mold removal bot? Is, is yeah. it good uh, good timing for that? Yep. Yeah. Have you got anything you want to add something there, man? Imran, you've been trying to try and get something in here. Tell me. Uh, I'll, I'll talk about it in the context of the mold removal bot, so we can kind of move on. Yeah, okay. Um, I'll, just, I'll bring that up now. Gentlemen, uh, I'm, I'm so fired up about this. Beautiful. So, this is uh, this is mold removal. So, oh. so in this case, this is what we were talking about earlier. Um, you know, we, we've got a widget on the site in this example. Now, you, you know, normally you'll get a certain number of people who, for example, like the alternative, mm -hmm. like we discussed, is filling out a form who you know, they're really, they're, they're a warm prospect, they're a hot lead, they're going to fill out that form. There are a wide range of people who are kind of like hesitant and kind of need to be pushed over. You, you, you know, they need to understand that the value that they're getting is worth them actually giving you, you know, giving their personal information over to you because in 2021, people are very cautious about giving their personal information out on, on the net. <laughs> yeah. So what we effectively do is, is we build their confidence with a conversation here. And, and what we've got right here is actually 
So this is actually us putting our bot onto somebody else's website, um, perfectly legal. You can see from the link, it's just a demo. You know, we've not forced our bot onto their site. But Eric, <laughs> if you, you can actually, put this bot onto your contractor yeah. site. Exactly. Like so, oh my God, that is, that's actually ridiculously cool. Let me, let me ask you this, Imran. Um, so does this, you know, forgive my ignorance, will this bot work with like any Groove WordPress site or like what is, is there anything that it like doesn't work with? I know that's kind of a tough question there. Tell me what would the, yeah, go ahead. It works with any site. It's a simple copy and paste. Um, fully, you, you don't even need any apps or anything like that. You just There's literally just code. copy and paste one line of code into into the site. We're, we've got videos actually showing people exactly how to do it. For WordPress, we've got a dedicated plugin. Um, so you know, it's a really really simple fit. How much can I charge someone for a bot in Europe? Well, I, I know how much I can charge, is, which is what they'll pay. But what if, what are some of the prices people charge for a bot right is now? I love this. Um, I think it actually ranges all the way up to like five thousand dollars. I mean, uh, an interesting story, guys, is that one one of my friends is currently in a two hundred thousand dollar job um, at one of the top accountancy firms um, in the country, and he's actually giving up his job to start selling bots as a service. Like that, and we actually got. I actually talked to him about Matt's Rainmaker as well. Like he's like really, really interested. Well, I'm in telling you, Eric, I can together. already say that I want everyone in Maps Rainmaker using these bots. I mean, I, like, why would they not? This is. It's, well, it, I want it on my side, 100. percent Go ahead, Eric. Well, I want it on my side, 100. percent And um, you know, how, you know, you know that sound on current bots, like there. And then there's like this attractive woman's face in the bottom right corner. It's kind of boring, man. I mean, Eric. I'm looking. For, I'm ready for something new. You could send them a URL. The following can, is possible, I believe. So, so let's say it's time for them to buy, right? They're, they're, they're yeah. getting ready. To buy. Let's say you send them a picture of their site with a bot, but what the bot is there to do is to onboard them into your better proposal and get them like in it and clicking into it. Is there, is there a way of doing that? Because the better proposal, how, how do you send it to them? Like, the, you know, that's actually pretty, that's actually pretty cool. Thing, so instead of emailing yeah. them, you could send them a link to go to their own website where there's a bot there on their own website to take them to your $1,500 a month better proposal directly and skipping yeah. the. And, and, and the, the really cool part, guys, is that we've got over 160 templates which cover every local business you can imagine. Like what we say to our community is like, look, if you want a template and you can't find it, just tell us, we'll build it for you, with, you know, within a week. And all they have to do really is, you know, swap out names, like literally swap out business names. So you, you don't just send them a link to this. You, you actually, in about three minutes, I'd say, you go into the bot, you swap out the name of the business for another business, um, and then that's a personalized bot for their site. And we've got clients who actually just focus on one niche, one yeah, sector. Like us. Yeah, exactly. You know, massive crossover there with, with, with Matt's Rainmaker. And all they do is just swap out names of clients um, and then load that, load that onto a link and send the link to the client. We've even got sales templates. Yeah. Um, you know, where people can just copy and paste and switch out the link, uh, which I know ties in very much with what you guys do with Maps Rainmaker, well, where you have everything laid out. Step like this step. integration needs to be built, like like having Eric's eyes on this right now, and, and I'm going to get this over to Michael Tesalona, I'm going to get this over to uh, to Jason Calore, to Dan Anton, Joe Marfolio, because because there's, there's work to be done here that's going to be of such great benefit to, you know, to our you know, beautiful collective community that we're working together on here. This is, uh, I'm very fired up. Well, this is really good for mold, I think particularly because mold is something that it's either emergency or it's not emergency. And if it's not an emergency, that's when this bot really, really plays into the game, especially if someone wants to call up at 2 a.m. After hours is huge for this, right? Um, the other thought I had was, um, well, because I'd rather have someone just call me for if I had an HVAC thing going on at like 8 a.m., right? But let's say, you know, it's 2 a.m. and someone's you know, on their computer and they need something. 
you know, this might be the, the a great option here for them, especially, or if they want something that is, you know, they want to buy a new unit, right? You don't, you don't need to speak to someone right away. So there's a lot of options for this. Uh, I guess the, I keep on going back to the, the pricing thing is, um, you know, we're always looking for ways to improve our service, but also like improve the value. And we don't want to sell things that are not amazing. So we that's why we, we stick to such a narrow range of things that we're an expert in. But this bot, right, once we develop it, like you said, in a way that's great for our industry, we could offer it to everyone. And I'm just wondering, you know, I'm thinking to myself, how much can we charge someone per month? 50 bucks, 100 bucks? Like, yeah, I think that, charge I, them a setup I think fee of 1500 We know yeah. what I'm talking about? Yeah. What, what we'd suggest is like, look, you know, you're offering Max Rainmaker as a service, right? Yeah. Why don't you give them a month's free trial off the pot? You know, um, give them a free, you know, sell Maps Rainmaker as a service, three months trial off the bot, and then see how effective both services so are. So you can turn the bot off uh, remotely if somebody isn't making payment. Click of a button. Yeah. And and also we've got the capability of this exact same bot, this exact, because, you know, we like to call them conversation funnels because there's a lot of thought that goes into behind the templates, behind the templates that we put together. So these exact conversation funnels on Facebook um, and very soon WhatsApp um, and Telegram. So no matter what kind of messaging app, you know, somebody might be on Facebook at 2 a.m. in the morning, like you said, or, you know, they might be browsing on a site. You know, you, you've got to be on the different channels that your customers are on. Um, so that's why we really are big on like multi-channel functionality. Beautiful. Mm, so, so let me ask you this question, right? So let's say a prospect and I are on the phone, right? And I'm like, you know what? You know, it looks like you guys could use a little chat on a chat bot on your site. They're like, oh, I already have one. Um, why is this one? What's different about this chat bot than one I have? And I'm sure you guys see a chat bot that's probably like the most common one or a couple, like the Facebook one, obviously. But so what's why, why is this better than that, man? Besides the fact that you know, you could, you don't lose it. Like Mike said, if Facebook decides to change something, tell, tell me some of those, you know, you probably got something to say right now. Let me shut up. <laughs> no, it's a really, really good point. Um, so what we found is we started building bots years ago. Um, and what we found was that most, like not many people knew about bots actually when we started out. Um, but those that did were really focusing on Facebook messenger. Um, and that's cool. You know, we think Facebook's a great channel. But how we grew as a company was actually fo focusing on websites, um, exactly. keeping people on your websites and converting them on websites. So when we come across somebody who says, yeah, I've already got a bot on my site, more often than not, it's actually just restricted to Messenger. Or it might just be a website bot. But what we say is that actually you, you need multi-channel functionality because, look, everyone's on different channels and you're going to miss the opportunity if you've just got a bot that you know, is just a website bot or is just a messenger bot. Um, when you combine the power of all those different channels, I think that's when you truly have something that adds massive value to what you're offering. Okay, just, so just, just to yeah. add to that, sorry, Eric, just, just to add to that very quickly, we talk about the multi-channel bots, but also in, in this example as well, we have a, a new feature called human handover. So what that does is you can use the bot to qualify your traffic. And if they get to a certain point in the conversation that you've qualified them that they're hot enough to be handed over to one of your support staff, then inside the bot, they can be passed through to a member of, of, of support who can take over and actually close the sale human to human. And that, that is a seamless process in the bot that the end user doesn't necessarily know. I'm not saying you want to con them into thinking that they're either talking with a human or a bot. You, you, you've got to make these things clear sometimes. But the point is, it can be done. And then if somebody is not deemed qualified to be a hot lead, then you can just keep them in the bot and maybe collect their lead details and do something else with them. So you've got that flexibility to be able to close sales human to human as well. Yeah, because I, I had a question on our, on our Facebook page the other day where, you know, a potential customer was saying, well, I already dedicate like my live chat to, a, to a, outsource it to a company based in India. Um, and how we came went into this journey was that we were also using live chat on our websites um, and we, we had it outsourced to a company. Um, and what we found was that the cost was really racking up and often the, the, the conversions just weren't following. So it actually just started as an experiment. It was like, why don't we just try an automated conversation and see how far we go? Um, so what we say to people is that, look, you know, if you're actually cynical of how effective like an automated conversation might work, why not just try 
you know, automating the process up until you hand over the conversation to a human, then you're combining both elements, you're qualifying a lot of leads, you're cutting down on the time that people need to invest in actually, you know, supporting um, conversation on, on, on your site and you're cutting your costs massively um, and then, you know, br certainly bring the human element into it there. Um, and, you, you know, it's a similar process with Facebook Messenger as well, where, you know, if there's a chat, automated chat taking place on there, we call it like kind of, um, kind of hijacking the conversation. You can just jump in to the conversation if you deem necessary and, and, and kind of take over. Um, so it's kind of two concepts actually with bots is human handover where the bots kind of qualify the lead, but there's also a human takeover where you think actually um, maybe in this particular scenario, I want to jump into the conversation. This is unbelievable. Well, I, we always talk about having your best people at the top of the funnel. Um, and so what essentially means is, is if we can get someone to the point where we, we know they're worth talking to, then, you know, it makes sense for, uh, you know, the, the right person or the person that's going to have the best skills to convert that to jump in because we know that their time is only going to be, you know, taken when it's, it's worth the opportunity. And just yesterday, I wish I had that going for us. You know, our, our forms are so basic. It's like, we we need to we need to get something going pretty serious well and, and and these uh the same thing that holds true for the discovery form for our agency sites it's going to hold true for mold removal site it's going to hold true for a lawyer site it's it's going to hold true for anybody like like the, one of the things um you know we don't want to get stuck in themes where we only think of a bot and, and, and these guys have broken us out of that that's what i'm saying i'm, I'm seeing how sure, sure. Uh, uh, Imran and Simon are, Simon are breaking us out of, of a concept. We're all thinking of a bot as something that either maybe sits in the bottom right of a website or that's, you know, on uh, Facebook or whatever. But just that that innovation to say, hey, no, wait a second. You know, your your discovery form can be a bot instead. I mean, it, it's it's a, that's a dramatic potential realization. I mean, it, it's like because it's yeah. kind of absurd doing it anything else including think about this a discovery form simply can't make like it's stuck in place if somebody says let's say it was um what's your income uh you know or, or you know what's the size of your business how many employees do you have let's say it's that okay so let's say somebody selects three employees versus 100 employees well eric we might want to ask them or ask them for different data or get right on the phone with them if they're a 100 person you know employee but but we we lose that opportunity entirely by having just this static form on the page like all of a sudden a static form is just so absurd you know and it doesn't acknowledge everybody hates it when you call um a, a number and you give an account number or something like that and then they or, or your name or whatever and they pass you to somebody else and that person's like what's your account number and you're like so, i hate that mike Absolutely, it is the bane of my existence. Why did I, I just it. type this in? It absolutely kills me. I, th I, think, I think as well, Sorry. Mike, what you're talking there is, is a form from your point of view, but also from the end user, you can personalize it based on that. So if they click, they've got 100 employees. I saw that from your, from your based on that. So Wait, you, get the, you, you get the name and you say, uh, okay, okay, Simon. Uh, okay, Simon from New York, uh, if you want to. Right, yeah. uh, New York got it. You know, like that acknowledgement that it yeah. didn't just go off into space and it's nowhere. It again, it, um, one of the things I said yesterday during the webinar, I'm saying this again now, is so much when when you are selling marketing, then your any demonstration of competence sells you. Like it, like like demonstrations of marketing competence, like looking more put together, right? it has a way of like selling you very subtly because it implies hey i want to i want to roll with this guy i want i want pages that look like this guy's pages i want you know or i i want bots like this gal has bots right it's powerful that's so, exciting I, and i think one thing we haven't touched on yet is like in our minds the whole concept of a bot is to entertain um, you know, it's to engage and entertain. So, I mean, it might be a good opportunity to look at the gold bot. Um, oh, where yeah, let's, let's do that. And, and I know, uh, I know we're tight, but we're going to have to, we'll, we'll have to get back together and work more on this. This is terrific. Yeah, but, yeah that's a pretty, by the way, tip of the cap to Jason Calori. He really made this happen. Thank you, Jason. Go ahead. 
Uh, yeah, if, if I have a couple minutes, if we, if we could pop, if that makes sense, I'd like, you know, we could just pop yeah, on real sure. quick on this. Yeah. Okay, here we go. Really? So with, with this goal bot, the, the idea is, you know, the, the concept of this is that, you know, right now many people are, are worried about the state of the economy. You know, the dollar is at its weakest that it's been in decades. Um, you know, inflation is through the roof. So, you know, we're kind of pushing them towards gold as, as an investment opportunity. Gold's been really hot since COVID started. You know, it's, it's always going to be hot. So what we're actually pushing into as marketers here in this particular conversational funnel is, is actually fear. You know, people are worried. Um, so what we kind of train our members on is the opening block of a chat is just as important as a headline on a page or the yeah. first 20 seconds of a video. Because if people don't, if you don't capture their imagination in that opening block, you may well have lost them. So here, this is very much kind of like fear induced, like marketing, um, where you know you're announcing the fact that you've got some bad news for them, and you're kind of entertaining to an extent because you're using a GIF. You know, we we use GIFs throughout our conversations um, just to capture the the yeah, eyes. Good also, marketing, showing that you have a sense of humor again. Yeah. It's a demonstration of of higher value. Wonderful. Yeah. Tell, tell us the bad news. Let's see it. <laughs> well, exactly. So you've just got one line, you're keeping it short, you've got an image and you want them to click that button to get to the next block, which is further down your conversation funnel. Um, and, and this is where you reveal the bad news. Um, and, you know, again, we sprinkle a GIF in there just to really hammer home the point of the fact that the government is printing money right now. You know, it's a really, really bad situation, but it's getting worse. So, you know, you got to, you want to click that button again. Each one is a micro conversion. They're further down that conversation funnel. Um, and this is where you kind of introduce the concept of the fact that there's hyperinflation right now. Um, so you're telling them a story, you know, you've got it within a tight conversational bot sequence. Um, again, we're using GIFs to really, you know, entertain and, and really catch the attention, um, but also keep things relatively simple as well. Um, so then again, you know, we've just got a button at this point. We're just giving them one option is just to click the button. We, we're not branching the conversation off into anything else. Um, you know, we just want them to focus on clicking the button, revealing the story. Um, and, and yeah, so now we're into the next kind of like, you, you know, we're, we're getting close to our hook now where, you know, we're, we're, we're basically giving them the alternative to, to currently, you know, investing in money effectively. So, this is where we show them the way out um, and, and this is where we introduce the hook um, and they've just progressed further through the conversational funnel. Um, so this well, is the point at which we drop. All right, yeah, well, I'm, I'll tell you an observation that I've got. What's, what's really, I think, huge, because um, I got to jump in a minute, which is rather than having someone like look through your website, which they may or they may not do, who knows what's going to, this is something that's like live happening right now. It's like a, a movie almost and it's engaging them and it's not, it's, it's an active like, oh, well, you know, they are talking to me. I'm going to read this. It's, you know, like that's like a, it, you can't help but keep your eye on the screen here and you're you're engaged in a way you would not be able to be engaged before it's it's, it's huge it's act, it's i never even thought about anything like this right because now you've brought the chatbot to the center of the screen rather than like something in the corner that's an ancillary thing that i don't, I don't want to look at because it's going to get in the way for me yes yeah, precisely it's, it's interactive um what we often say is like a lot of people in our in our crowd remember choose your adventure um, in, in this case, you know, it's just, it's the one button, but usually in a bot, you know, you've got different buttons leading to different options. You know, it's like the, um, the, the, the movie recently that came out, was it Bandersnatch where, you know, interactive movies, you know, lead, lead them down different paths. Um, but what we're really doing here though, is, is we're warming them up. Like we, we want, cause we, we want to convert them into a lead. And, you know, as we, we've got this button now where we've, you know, we've introduced a guide to them and we've got that commitment to them where, you know, they want it. They click that button, they want it. And this is where we ask them to type out their email. The alternative is we just stick a form on a landing page um, and, you know, we, we want them to fill out the form, which is nowhere near as powerful as this. But what we also find as well, and we haven't spoken about it much so far, is that a lot of our audience use um, exit intent pop-ups. Now these, I've been in marketing for like probably 12 years now and I've always seen exit pop-ups and frankly, they're one of the most annoying things for me personally, if not done right, you know, they're hugely irritating. But what our community do is they actually use 
bots as exit intent pop-ups. So, you know, they've got massive, massive novelty value because I personally haven't been on any sites outside of ours and our communities where anybody is using an exit intent pop-up as, as a bot and, and as a conversation. Um, and again, if you just keep it to like small chunks like this, so you're not kind of overwhelming them with, with a pop-up, you can get people to, to then recommit to what you're offering um, and, you know, click through again through the chat and, and, you know, eventually hopefully get them to enter their information so you've captured the lead that way. Whereas when what most sites do is just they stick a form on their exit intent pop-up and the conversion rate of those forms is really, really low because, you know, those people are uninterested and it's hard to get them back uh, in. Imran, hold on. I got to interrupt because I have to leave in a second, but I just had one final like explosion in my mind, which is that there's this company that sells these uh, air conditioning units that are new and um, they've spent, they charge people 2000 bucks to get the information on a page on their website. But I was just thinking about how that information would be worth so much more if it was inside of a bot like this and how we could probably make that pitch on Wednesday next week during a meeting I have with this guy. And I, I think that's a good place to drop the mic here right now. And I'll, I'm gonna let you know how it goes. Uh, gentlemen, thank you so, so much. This has been eye-opening. This is such a tremendous integration that we've put so together much, with Maps Rainmaker and with uh, with Convergio Bot and all the bonuses, everything works amazing. Uh, gentlemen, thank you so much. We'll see you inside of Maps Rainmaker and we will see you inside of Convergio Bot and you're gonna see it all come together, putting it all on steroids. Thanks, guys. Thank you very much. Cheers, Mike. Cheers. Cheers, man.